everybody. Welcome, Artists on Lockdown, hanging and banging. Ron Onesti here in Rock and Roll Heaven, just outside of Chicago, Illinois, in St. Charles at the Arcata Theater. Welcome to our weekly celebration of rock and roll legends and icons. And my co-host, our two brothers that I just love to get in between every week. It's a lot of fun. But talk about legends, talk about heroes, talk, talk about icons. Carmine Apice, Vinny Apice, my brothers, going to be joining us tonight with Eddie Ojeda, Fernando Perdomo, and John 5, three rock and roll guitars. It's going to be a big show. So let's bring to the camera, Carmine and Vinny, my brothers. Oh. What's up, gentlemen? You jerk, oh, Carmine. Nice shirt, really? I don't, know, I don't know if you were going to do <laughs> he it. He changed his shirt. I thought we are doing the... I, I was doing... Uh, hold on, hold on, hold yeah, on. Hold yeah, on yeah, 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 yeah. The brother's a knucklehead. The silver hair, he's forgetting yeah. things. <laughs> Fucking! I, I was you wrong. Not wearing. I'm gonna wear uh, this shirt. See, We're wearing it for you. I yeah. know. I normally am so. I grabbed the wrong shirt. Yeah, this is what yeah, I, I don't want to say I grabbed the wrong shirt. How's but that? I, this is what I'm gonna wear tonight. Oh, that's, because that's better. You can't <laughs> look at this. You guys, I, let me tell I you something. You on. guys are. You guys are rock and rollers. You guys, you know, forever. But I'm honored that I have had such an it. effect <laughs> on, your, on your I fashion yell, I yelled sense. at you. I you said, don't the, do I'm it. I'm going to change my shirt. Hang on. I said, don't do it. I spilled Ron water. wasn't doing it. Oh, man. Hang on. I'll be right back. I don't want to wear that. He's actually going to. That's how uncomfortable he is in cool shirts. He's got to yeah, literally right. change he's it. He's got to change it. You know? What's he going to do? Put a T-shirt on? Probably <laughs> a black T-shirt. You know, a black T-shirt. That's yeah. funny. He's got he's got the one white T-shirt and one white collared shirt, which oh. ironically he probably wears at funerals. Which if that's a, yeah. that's so many. Yeah. <laughs> How yeah. you doing there? Uh, yeah. uh, there he is. There you go. See, he's back to back to normal. Back to the rock and roller. Yeah. Hey man, guess who is excited to to have Lasted Line coming to his theater next week? That would be me. That would be me. Oh, okay. I, <laughs> I was supposed so... to be at your theater, but... You are going to be at my theater. The timing changed. Now it's April. I know. What am I going to do? You know. Oh, man. But you know what? I think, you know, I'm going to talk to uh, Steve. There's got to be, maybe, depending on Vinny's uh, schedule, we could sneak a drum wars in there between them. Oh, that would be do cool. It. So do it. that, do uh, it. you know, I could totally do that. So I'll talk yeah. to Steve on that. Um, but anyway, know. it's so good to see I don't you know. guys. I changed, my, I changed my mind. I don't know about that. You, no, you're crazy. You're gonna <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it. Hey, we got a big show tonight. We've got three guests tonight, and uh, all of them. You know, remember last week we're going. We had uh, as m many shows. We've got all drummers. Uh, this show we've got all Xers, and I'm very excited. Oh, yeah. oh I'm so excited! Uh, don't forget, next week we have a special. Uh, we're doing a rerun next week because we got a couple things going on. We've got uh, uh, trade shows in Aiba and Nashville, a lot of traveling, and Vinny's going crazy. So we'll uh, we'll be announcing during the week our rerun for next week. But tonight, uh, we're, let's get it started because I'm telling you, three apps. I'm one of the things I love about this show. Not only get to work with you guys, but I get to work with some of my heroes. John Five is coming. Let's bring John Five to the uh, to the screen because definitely one of my heroes. What's up, hey, Jay? Hey, John, how you doing, bro? I feel like I should go change my shirt. Well, you know what? <laughs> uh, you know, you frankly, I frankly I didn't know what to expect. I mean, you're kind of dressed down. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect. Yeah, you know, I saw the picture in the promo. I said, man, I had a drum set that was leopard like that. <laughs> in the promo picture, you met. How you doing, John? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How you guys doing? I'm good. Good. We're, We're doing We're tremendous. We're uh, where are you at right now? I am on Ventura Boulevard, and my wife is inside getting a tattoo. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> That's about <laughs> as rock and roller of a response that you can get, really. Yeah, really. I mean, That's really. A... <laughs> like he's like he's like in the drive-through, the tattoo drive-through right now inside right, Ventura right. Boulevard. <laughs> Well, great Thanks. to see you, brother. Thank you so Thank much for you. joining us. Thanks for what, having um, me. Oh, yeah, man. I want to get right to it. Again, I'm a huge fan. Uh, I, I believe you played my place uh, uh, recently, or not recently, but before, prior to COVID, the Arcata Theater in St. Charles. 
and uh, we've got you coming back as well. You're doing so many projects, but um, what you got going on right now? What's uh, what you getting ready for? Um, let's see. I just got off the road. We did a run with uh, my band, The Creatures, and we just did a bunch of shows with Zombie. And in November, we go and do a show with Metallica with Zombie, and then I'm going to go do some shows with Ingve. And so yeah. all sorts of stuff. Just uh, well, that's what thinking. it is. That's what it is. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. That's what, oh, you're going to be playing by my, my place with Ingve. That's what it is. Yeah. So it's uh, oh, cool. wonderful. Everything's. Uh, I'm just happy to be out and picking and um, all that stuff. So I'm very very happy about that. Tell me yeah. about that uh, the show with Ingve. Are you doing it? It's because it says John Five. What are you going to do? A creature style or what? What? Uh, which uh, type of uh, performance yeah. are you do? I'm going to have my band, The Creatures, and we're just going to do our crazy show. And it's going to be uh, it's going to be a lot of notes that night. Yeah. Man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, are you going to use right. one of his like 40 marshals that he makes us put up there all the time? I know. Yeah, I think he's going to do that. You can't see Ingve without all those marshals. I think it's wonderful. Um, I love the like the vintage amps and stuff. So maybe I should do like, you know, 40 of those little the fender combos from the 50s <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah Ron, and you've got to get them all but you know what you look at yeah. you look at you know, what he just said right i mean just understand what he just said something you know again one of those uh one of those uh, fenders from the 50s this guy let me just say speak for you for a second john uh this guy is so seeped into like vintage doing some research on you and you look at john five and you look at his persona and you're thinking, where does he get his inspiration? And the first thing that comes to my mind when I'm looking at you with Rob Zombie, I'm thinking, yeah, hee haw. That's where yeah. I get. That's where he's gonna get. Uh, Roy Clark, uh, you know, that's that's where he's getting. Uh, Buck Owens, he gets his inspiration. <laughs> it's true. That's why I play play a Telecaster. I saw hee haw when I was a little kid, and um, I knew I wanted to play an electric guitar, and I watching hee haw i thought that was i thought that's just how the electric guitar looked i thought mm -hmm. it was it only came in a telecaster and uh it just it was just burned in my brain and i was so excited and that's why i play a telecaster today and um because of hee haw i used to watch hee haw too we yeah. all did Are you, no i didn't watch hee haw i watched barbie benton yeah that's what yeah. i watched <laughs> that's <laughs> guys i was on the road when hee haw was going oh, okay on. <laughs> i never That's watched right. hee haw we were going through puberty at the time we we're watching uh, uh what was her name uh with the uh howdy with the, with the oh little yeah that's uh, mini pearl mini pearl oh right. yeah mini pearl yeah i can't believe we're talking mini pearl and hee haw right now with <laughs> that's right five on the on, on. <laughs> john that's let me ask you a question Yes, you, you've got this great persona, and several. You look at Rob with a persona. You look at other people with personas. How did that happen for you? Is that, I mean, you know, because it, obviously it's, pretty, it's, it's consistent. Um, was it anything like, let's say, the Kiss guys, for example? Uh, you saw the makeup, and did that have an influence? But how did you actually come to your persona? I, you know, I have always loved, like, um, that kind of thing, even with Monster when I was like really little and it's not out of the ordinary most you know young kids love monsters and superheroes and stuff like that but I've always loved that kind of image and you know with Alice Cooper and Kiss and that's how I always you know uh, would would I would dress up like that even before I knew how to play guitar but it, when I would walk to a backstage and I was dressed kind of normal and, you know, people would say hello to us. But then when we walked out of the backstage, when we're all dressed up, all the cameras go off. And I was like, well, that, you know, that there's an answer right there. You know, people like to see that. So um, mm -hmm. I just kept uh, dressing like that and and going forward like that. And I, it's it's been great. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's got yeah. such a I mean, it's such a part of, the, of your performance. It's such a part of your presence. I mean, it really sets the tone. You walk out there, man, it's like freaking crazy. It's, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. And, and that's what it's all about. I just, I'm just yeah. happy that people enjoy it. And I just want to have people have a good time, you know, and, and that's what it's all about. 
do you do you find uh, uh, people in the audience uh, trying to emulate you in your makeup? All the time, yeah. We have um, we sell these masks and all this stuff, and the greatest thing happened. I was at I was doing a show, and it was an all ages show, and there was a kid. He had to be six years old, and he had my mask on. He was just playing uh-huh. air guitar, and it just meant the world to me. I'll never forget it, because it's just that's what it's all about, you know. Influence. Uh, Uh-oh. Hang on, John. I think we're losing you here. Uh, uh, we lost audio. Lost audio, John. Hmm. Damn it. Oh, there we are. There we go. Gotcha. So, when, yeah. so whenever whenever my phone rings, it'll knock me off. So sorry about that. <laughs> no um, problem. But, yeah, and, and things like that, it's so incredible, you know, to have that happen and no, see these young off. kids. Uh, are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah, it's just I love influencing kids and things like that. So it's very special to me to have that. Yeah, you could you could see. I mean, you look at your audience. I, I saw actually saw some pictures of, you know, broad base. I think you were with, uh, uh, I forgot who, what, what particular show it was, but you see people in the audience. They're all, I mean, it's Halloween. Uh, it's a Halloween show, it looks like, you know, but very yeah. cool. That's got to give you a little, uh, it's got to pump you up as well, right? It does. It makes me really happy. It's just a, It's just something fun to get away from all the craziness in the world. You know, we can all get out, and have a great time, and forget about our problems for a little while. You know, as intense as you are with this music and everything, I just love how how real you are. How how much again your your inspiration comes from Buck Owens and Roy uh, Clark, and the fact that you're a Kiss fan and a Kiss collector. And I got to ask you because we all are Kiss collectors to a certain degree. Some of us may just have one uh, doll or something, and others have multiple stuff. Wait, wait, wait a minute! What do you have, Ron? Uh, I have a Kiss blow up doll. I, I'd rather not talk about, but um, is uh, <laughs> but uh, but what is your uh, what would you say your most prized Kiss possession is, John? Well, I have like I guess my most prized possession. Um, Gene had a outfit in 1974. It was one of his first outfits. It has the horns on. It's a very famous. Um, outfit it has the horns on it has the skull and crossbones on the back and he's got wings on it and uh so i have that outfit and uh you know a bunch of other outfits and every piece of merchandise all over the world and it's just a comforting thing to collect (laughs) things like that Mm -hmm. um it's it's Mm -hmm. some from my childhood and i think that's why people collect stamps or uh coins or anything uh, anything else it's just a fun hobby and it's um Mm -hmm. something you can meet people around the world and and talk about this you know because all these things are from our childhood and it's just a a nice little escape if you will was that uh an original gene outfit or it's just like a, a costume no no that's his it's his from uh 1974 yeah wow yeah that's that's valuable it's pretty cool have you ever been to gene's house Uh, i'm sorry have you ever been to gene's house oh yeah yeah yeah. so you know the room he has with all all his dolls and all everything is gene you know it's pretty pretty impressive pretty impressive so he's got an actual room with all his merch in it oh yeah uh... it's like his office he has everything in there you know kind of wow that must be yeah. a, big, a big office. It's wonderful. Yeah. I had talked to uh, mm-hmm. I had talked to Doc McGee on another thing. We did a couple projects together, and I did ask him because he's actually credited with bringing Kiss back. And it was almost he was saying that that the, the bringing Kiss back almost uh, came as a result of all the merchandising. He said he had only over twenty six hundred items, different types wow. of different items in the merchandising. Yeah. I mean, that's just crazy. Yeah, yeah. They're the there's king of it. I mean, yeah. there's, there, there's, there's a lot. Just think of like all the countries all over the world, because mm-hmm. a lot of them put stuff out. 
and a lot uh, of international. A, you're right. It's a big world out there, and they were an in, <laughs> international band. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Let me ask you specifically, uh, John. I, I heard a, a, a story that that uh, um, Zombie was kind of questioning whether he wants to continue or become an actor, going down a different road, and you kind of had something to do with him kind of sticking with it. Well, what happened was he wanted to do Ozfest, and he didn't really have a band because he had a lot of drama, I guess, with his band, and um, so he got rid of his, his band, and I met him, and I was like, "Oh my God, this is this is a, this is amazing, and this is incredible. Uh, let's you know, let's go out and tour." And I was very excited. I was super, um, what's the word, just like crazy about it, you know. And we got mm -hmm. along so well. He was like, "Well, this is you know turning into something, and it's been 17 years, and wow. <laughs> we're uh -huh. still we're still going." going at it and we've had the same band for forever because you know i'm happy to be there he's happy to have me there and it's just been a wonderful friendship and a wonderful partnership as well well you're right. in the audience when you're there and you're performing and you're rocking it out and again you know the fans they're 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 so many fans take things to just maximum levels i mean has there ever been a time when you're uh when you're up on stage and you're doing your thing and you're looking out in the audience and look and, and something happened with a fan or looked a certain way like, oh, that is over the top even for us. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's I love the fans so much. It's 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 been crazy. It's been a it's been a wild, wild, wild ride, just like all of you guys, you know, it's and yeah. you know what it's like. It's been a wild ride. But I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm just so happy and fortunate to be doing what I'm doing. Yep. And um, Agreed. because I never I never wished upon this. You know, I never thought that anyone would ever know my name or anything. I just wanted to be a session player. And um, you know, I'm talking to you guys. I'm traveling the world. And, and it's, it's a wonderful life. I just feel like I'm going to wake up and go, whoa, I had this weird dream that, like, you know, I was this <laughs> well-known musician and yeah. played with all these people. And, yeah, like, it's even hard for me to say rock star, you know, and and made all these records. And <laughs> so I'm just waiting for that day to wake up and go, ah, you know. <laughs> hey, John, I you know, remember I'm, when we did a, a rock camp? We did a rock camp together yeah. with the rock fantasy camp? Absolutely, of course. Yeah. We we were that was jam wonderful. we were on the stage and we were calling out songs. John knew every song. I mean, we called out. It was incredible, right? What kind? Oh, were they just were the Stairway to Heavens or what kind of songs were they? Just obscure songs, whatever. Stand People up and would, shout and Yeah, he knows every really? song in, in rock almost. Yeah. We were blown away. We were like, You know <laughs> that one too? Holy shit. Yeah. Well, Vinny, I you know, talking we... about personas, uh, I mean, with Black Sabbath and Ozzy and all that, did, did they ever give you any kind of a direction or, hey, you you know, we'd like you to kind of look like this or take or wear this or that kind of a thing? with Because Oz is out there, too. Who are you talking to? You. With Me? Sabbath. Yeah. No. No. Now, Vinny always looked like that. I know. He I always, always looked looks... like this. I always look this young. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. that's right. Anyway, uh, we were just uh, blown away by you know naming these songs, and he knew every song there was, yeah. and and most I, of the people think, don't know that I many. I think songs. I did some with John too. I can't remember it's what it was. Incredible. Did we do a recording so or something, John? I can't remember. Yes, we were recording something, and we also did a couple. Uh, jams and things like that and uh you know i always love whenever i get a chance to play with you guys it's always exciting you know i've seen you get yeah. both you guys at concerts numerous times and again it's just been such a wonderful wonderful life you know i was having yeah. you know the nosebleeds watching both of you guys and now you know being able to make some music with with both of you it's been uh it's been wonderful and i i don't take it for granted and i i don't think i ever will um 
because I'm so appreciative of yeah, that's what's great. been yeah. happening. Yeah. 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 That's how really long does it take to how long does it take to get the tattoo? <laughs> Your wife. I, she I, full back? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, no. She just she just she it's so funny because she's just addicted to getting these little tattoos, you know, around and stuff and it's like, okay, you know, get whatever you want, you know, it's it's uh were you so in there with her? To, were you to get in there? Were you in there with her and came out to do this? Or no, no, no. No, it, okay. I, no I'm a, I'm in the car and stuff like that. So it's uh, cool. I'm just waiting because I wanted to talk to you guys. Yeah, cool. Okay. <laughs> That's yeah, I think, so cool. hey, don't we have somebody else to bring on there, Ron? I think we do. We just he's just yeah. coming to the uh, to the screen. Uh, you know Miss Fingers uh, from Twisted Sister. I'm so excited! Another big hero, Eddie Ojeda. Let's bring him on. Hey, Eddie! Eddie. Hey, hey guys! <laughs> yeah. So good to see you, brother. Hey, John. Nice to meet you. <laughs> How are John, you? Eddie, 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 John. Eddie, John. Never John. What? Oh, man. I, you never met John. I didn't realize you're that. No, you I, did, I never to, actually met John. You guys used to wear all the makeup and everything too, and you know, John. And and then me and Vinny never did. That's right. Yeah. Well, he made a good point about you know. <laughs> but his, but tonight the, but tonight you put on the, the makeup. shock the shock thing. <laughs> yeah, that that's right. people get from from uh, from wearing makeup and, and having that persona, you know. Yeah. It also makes you feel, and I'm sure John feels this way. When when you put the makeup on, you become that warrior. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, and uh, it, it's just one of those things. You just feel it. And just, it, yeah. It yeah, I know what you mean. When I put on my eye makeup, I become the warrior. <laughs> then it becomes the monster normally. It's the drum yeah. monster. The you know. drum monster. So you're saying, you know, Eddie, that adds to your performance right. aspect by being in that makeup. It adds to it. I always right. felt like, uh, you know, I don't know if you saw the slap shot, but it was always like, the two, remember the Hanson brothers? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> they put on the makeup, and it was—it's kind of that kind of feeling, you know. Uh, it just yeah. did something. It made you yeah. feel a little more special, different, you know. And it's part of theater. I mean, I love, you know, theater and performing, and it adds a more of an excitement to to a show where people are actually, you know, they came to see a show. And mm -hmm. It creates yeah. that more of that fantasy. Yeah. Well, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of that kind of stuff. You look at, again, you look at the masters, you look at Kiss, but you look at so many others that have done it, and it does add so much to the presentation, the performance, the here's, excitement. Here's right? an idea. Who was the first ones that did that? Well, David Arthur Bowie. Brown, Arthur Brown. Yeah. yeah, David Bowie's a great oh, one. That's Who? Right, right. Arthur Brown. Yeah, that's Wow, fire, that's going you know, back. It's going him. back. Right? At the sixties, sixties. Yeah, right? he came out with the fire he, thing. He, he, the he fire. was the one with the fire, and he had all the makeup on, and and you know, I, I think Alice Cooper looked at him and got got his, some of his idea from from Arthur Brown. You know, and that was that's right. Uh, that's true. I, I never. And then we that. did. We we. I remember I saw Alice Cooper at the whiskey when he first was coming up. <laughs> and all he had was a a, a door. Right, a door frame, and he'd walk through it, and he'd have this rubber chicken, and wearing you know all women's outfits and stuff. That was the original band, you know, and and we were there with Vanilla Fudge watching, you know, this one going, what the hell is going on? Here? Probably know? thinking, boy, this guy's nothing's gonna, uh, this guy's never gonna make anything of himself, right? But he was he was with Frank Zappa's organization, you know. Yeah, he used to hang out in the background. John it made sense. In, you know, it in, made in the back sense, room at the Rainbow. The, the ones yeah. that, you know. The back room yeah. upstairs, yep. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Awesome. That's Alice stuff, you know. That's yeah, uh, yeah. good stuff. Group. So do anyway. you have um, a time, Eddie, when uh, you're up there and you're doing your thing and you're, <clears throat> you're looking at D and you're going, man, oh, man, we should. Was there a time? I know Kiss went through that whole thing about, you know, let's let's do this without the makeup this time. Was there a point when you said, you know what, let's give it a try? Uh, when we get when, when we got back together after a while, we just decided to stop wearing the makeup, you know, because of different reasons. You know, we, we were older, and nobody cared. 
because it, we had already established that, you know, that theatrics. And now it was more about the music, which I kind of dug, you know, I, I, I kind of really appreciated that. You know, so sort of just the, the theatrics. It's right. about the music. But then why do you think Kiss went back? You know, because, I mean, I'm just your own opinion. Well, that's always been their thing. I, I don't know if they could get away with without doing it. They probably could. They, they went back when, when Peter and Ace came back with them, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and Doc took over. And then they said, well, you know, we got to have Kiss as, as Kiss, you know, bigger than yeah. life Kiss. And that's then when they went back and then they just stayed there, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, what, what would it have been like if they went back with Kiss, with Ace, no and Peter, with no makeup? That wouldn't have been right. cool. Yeah. You know? And yeah. also helps with the merchandising thing again. Totally. It really pushes totally. it. <laughs> it. Absolutely. It's funny you, you mentioned about uh, Gene's house, because I'm good friends with Ace, because we're both from the Bronx, we live yeah. here, and we've known each other for a long time. And the last time he lived in New York, he had all the Kiss stuff <laughs> in one room you know? <laughs> and it was unbelievable you know and it wasn't just a stuff it was mostly it, a stuff just by himself i'm like oh my god i mean any kiss fan would have freaked out to be there because you know it was just unbelievable the amount of stuff that, that was in that room you know wow. yeah. the merch thing was just insane and it worked yeah it's, it's an incredible, uh, when he comes by our theater, he, he plays at least once or twice a year by us, man. And he just destroys, destroys, though, man. Really, unbelievable. Um, yeah. You know, we've got, uh, you know, I'm sure a good friend of your, Bumblefoot. I know you guys all know Bumblefoot. He's a regular on our oh, yeah, show. Yeah, Ron, yeah. And uh, Ron, yeah, he's a great guy. And, you know, something that he does on the side, he's got this great hot sauce. Now, Right. I understand. <laughs> yeah. Where's my hot sauce? I mean, Where's your hot sauce? <laughs> We're going to have a hot, hot sauce, sauce off. <laughs> oh, oh, Eddie does hot sauce obscene. too. I mean, yeah, that's right. Oh, my oh God. you do? He's got a hot sauce. He's got the uh, twisted hot sauce. And I'm very interested in the fact that how you came to the whole dark cherry one because that is, I, I've tried it. It's unbelievable. It thank really you. is. Thank you. Thank you. Um, basically, I had health issues with uh, gout. I used to get gout attacks. And uh, and it wasn't because I was eating like a king. <laughs> it was just, it, you know, I had uric acid that would build up in certain parts of my body. And it was very painful. So I would eat cherries. And a good friend of mine, he's a chef, Chef Sean Rosati, he, you know, I talked, I talked to him and he already had some wound sauces out. And I said, is there a cherry hot sauce? And he said, no. I said, well, let's make one. And we went back and forth, and that's how that came to be. And, you know, wow. it's been right. doing well for like it's about six years now I've been doing it. Yeah, wow. Man. John, what do, you, what do you have on the side? Anything? You have a tattoo <laughs> collar? You have hot sauce? You have <laughs> you make soda? All, all, wine. The, all I, no, I haven't done soda yet. All, that's I, a good all idea. I do is sit on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> just Come on, I don't believe that. I don't have anything. I bet when you're sitting on the couch, you have the guitar in your hand. It was something I did out of fun. And, you know, just to have, it's <laughs> kind of cool to have a hot sauce, you know, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not like yeah, it's, it's not making me rich. We're going to have Bumblefoot and Eddie on the same show again. Yeah, you should. We'll talk about <laughs> hot sauce. We should. A It'll hot be our culinary hot show, hot our sauce, cooking uh, show. Rum off kind of cooking show, yeah. Cook but off. it's got to be, I mean, if you're a rock and roller, it's got to be hot sauce. It can't be like Eddie Ojeda mayonnaise. I mean, it just <laughs> no. doesn't work. <laughs> I got, I got, I'm working on some, a new uh, Here it comes. set of pillows. Pillows, yeah. Pillows. You know, I have to change it's called your pillow. pillow. <laughs> yeah, not, One of our managers yet. said we got to have the Peace Brothers uh, tomato sauce, you know. A peach, yep. yeah. Brothers tomato yep. sauce. Yep. Or, you yeah. should, and Definitely. And he got the uh, pesto sauce and the, you know, all that Compete stuff. With Rayos. We never did it yet, but oh, let's yeah. do it. We might as well do it. Everybody else is doing hot sauce. So we might as well do the tomato you, sauce. What the hell? You guys <laughs> could kill Rayos. Are you kidding yeah. me? You got to keep stirring it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pictures of us with the, the, 
the chef had the on. Stirring the sauce. Stirring the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you telling you, know. I think it's a great idea. We'll have my meatballs, your yeah, sauce, meatball. we'll get Ron's, and Vinny's Ron's pillows. Meatballs. Yeah. I'm going to love the pillows. Uh, I love meatballs. the meatballs. And you yeah. talked a little bit about your, your health, Eddie, and it's interesting where Under the Blade came from in 1982. I mean, that's how much of an effect that you have on this band. Yeah. Um, Dee wrote that song about me because I had to go to, I had uh, palace. Right. My vocal cords it got really bad and, uh, you know, I had to go in for surgery. So D said, I'm going to write a song about this. And, you know, some people thought, some politicians thought it was uh, sadomasochism. <laughs> it was so far from that. It was really like a, a, you know, like an honor to, like a support thing about me going for surgery. Yeah. 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 Well, it worked. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it was very, very popular. And, yeah. you know, D comes across, he's been on our show. He's a good friend. Just uh, um, a guy who really cares about his bandmates, right? Is that the kind of relationship you guys have? Definitely. Yeah. I talk yeah, to D all the cool. time. You know, very, like, uh, very honest guy. He'll, he's really yeah. straight up front with you, man. He doesn't bullshit you. Mm -hmm. He's one of the only guys I know today that's moved into California. All That's my right. friends moved out. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Well, he moved exactly. there because his son moved there, and then his son moved back to New York. Uh, <laughs> That's damn. Funny. That's funny. So, but most of his family still lives in LA now. So, right. well, I think D had enough of the Midwest and New York uh, with his uh, with his whole Christmas uh, uh, plays and musicals. Like enough of this freaking snow stuff. Back to back yeah. to back to California, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm in Nashville now. I love it here. Oh, you're in Nashville? Yeah. We were just in Nashville. Yeah, he was going to come and see us, but he, uh, did you have uh, COVID? I forgot why you I did it. have, I did get COVID, yeah. Uh, yeah, he had, he had COVID. The only one. Like, right before NAM. Yeah. I was going to go to NAM, but then, man. Yeah. So what, like, do you guys, what do you both think of that fact that they're going to have NAM in June? in california that, isn't that a bit ridiculous in june that's when everybody's going to be touring yeah i don't know i mean yeah it's it, it we'll see what happens i mean it's uh i guess they're trying to be careful yeah i know but you know you might as well uh you know in june to me, have it some other, have it to some me, other time not uh, june. i i think personally that NAM's been going on since around like 1955 or 56, but you know what? I don't think NAM's going to last much longer, you guys. I know really? it sounds terrible wow. to say, but I and not not because of the coronavirus or anything like that, but I just think it's so expensive to put on for these companies. Exactly. But yeah. I don't, I really don't think it's going to uh, hold on much longer. I mean, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. What do I know? But just seeing how things are going, probably another five years or something. You know, Plus, I'm when everybody really thing. understood what they could do virtually now, it's given everybody a whole different yeah. perspective. You, yeah. you could see all the new gear, right. like, yeah, online. Well, the thing is, yeah. it, it is like like John said, it's very very expensive. I mean, I'm I'm friends with the Ash Brothers, and it it, it cost them like half a million yeah. dollars to to sure. do them. Yeah, but what's and, the, and, but and the you essence think of about like when they had this when, when they had when they had this lockdown, they were still selling instruments and they probably made the same amount of money and probably saved some money too exactly. by not doing NAM. Who knows? I don't know. But yeah. isn't the essence of NAM? I mean, you know, even for you guys, is I mean, equipment, this and that, of course. But isn't the essence of NAM like? You know, walking down the aisle and seeing Eddie Ojeda over there and John Five over there. Me, yeah, you get to see all your musician friends. That's in what one I'm place. saying. So <laughs> if they rework it, yeah, it's more of point. the social yeah. aspect yeah, and not as much of the whole yeah. video game esque of it all. You know, I mean, I think they could still have it. Just focus more on the the the, the high. You know, I'm walking by. I'm giving Eddie Ojeda a high five. I mean, and I'm a fan. How cool is that? Yeah. And 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 you guys are fans of each other, giving each other high fives. Yeah, and you get to see people that you haven't seen for Absolutely. a while. And you hang out, mm -hmm. you know. And I, you know, I, 
I think I, I missed one NAM show since 1978. Really? You know? Yeah. And I've, I've been doing them constantly ever since I started oh, wow. doing clinics in 72, 73. Then Ludwig said, oh, you got to come to NAM." I came to NAM. Wow, this is cool. But, but Carmine, if you, if you remember the early NAM shows, it was just guys like us. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't like all these crazy. Now there's so many crazed fans, and you know, God bless them. Yeah. But you know, now we, like I have to hide to go into my hotel room. Yeah, you know? yeah I know. It's, 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 you know, I'm not Gene Simmons. You know, I'm not yeah. like that famous, or you know, just yeah, a guy yeah. in a band. Well, yeah, I, I get it. And, but uh, it, it is sometimes it's ridiculous to try and walk down the aisle. You know, if you're on yeah. the way to somewhere and you got people. Now come to this booth if you want to talk or you want to say hello because I got to get there. <laughs> yeah, it just got yeah. too fan based, and yeah. you know they they didn't care. They just kept selling mm -hmm. tickets to anybody. Selling and, tickets. And in, in the beginning, more. it wasn't like that. It was like just, you know, it was very private. I felt it was like wow, you know, you go to the yeah, bar, but they always had the one there. day. They always they always had from what I remember the one day of the fans who would come. Sunday. You know? A Sunday, yeah, yeah, Sunday, but then it's Sunday yeah. we could come. But, but everybody got in anyway. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Friday, yeah. Saturday. Yeah, that's cool. but that's cool. gotta be cool. Though. That's gotta be, that's the Nam show is a time when when you guys are fans. Like you're walking, Vinny, exactly. you're walking by, and you see there's Eddie Ojeda, and you you know that kind of a thing. It's kind of a cool one time, really, when you can kind of let your fan I said, hair down. There's there's Eddie Ojeda, and he owes me twenty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> It's a good you time to collect. It's yeah, a right. good time to collect. Let me go find them. Yeah. No, no, no but that's, 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 you, you got off cheap. Now you'll, Eddie, you'll never have to see Eddie again. He'll, he'll never <laughs> ask you for money again. Oh, wait, that's from the Bronx Tale. Sorry. <laughs> the Bronx Tale. So, yeah, it, it was nicer back then because it was just us, you know, and it was kind of like a, a mutual respect that you got to, to meet just the guy. Yeah. You know, from all the different bands, and it was, it was very. It seemed very private. You know, you know, in the old days, like in the '60s, like uh, with Hendrix and all that, nobody knew what the Nam show was. You know, mm -hmm. I never heard of the Nam show until somewhere in the mid '70s. You know, but uh, yeah, everybody was endorsed, but nobody knew about the Nam show or did anything like the Nam show. Yeah, but now everybody in California knows about the Nam, and they purposely everybody. go there. Everybody. Just to bust your balls, basically. I mean, how many people just come up and bust your balls for no reason at all? Yeah. Like, no. band, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, right. So I'm your biggest fan. That's the one. Yeah, I'm your biggest fan. Well, that's, that's pretty, pretty big. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> you know, on this show, we meet a be. lot. Of, we meet a lot of people. We meet a lot of people, obviously, that uh, whose lives and whose careers have been touched. By Carmine, by Vinny, it's really it's really exciting for me to witness all that. Like you know, Carmine, I learned this style from you, or I've been watching you for years. And obviously, another guy that touched so many careers was Ronnie James Dio. Um, yeah. Two thousand five, you did this Axes to Axes uh, project, Eddie, and uh, obviously Dio was on that, and Sarzo and and D. And can you tell me a little bit about that project, the evolution, and and specifically uh, Ronnie's involvement? Yeah, we uh, we actually did a show with um, with Dio in Puerto Rico, which I'm Puerto Rican, so it was like yep. my family was there, and you know they opened for us. I mean, and it's fun. It's kind of weird because I, Vinny, you remember we opened for uh, yeah you, for you guys on the uh, second tour. Yeah, yeah, and and you know that's when everything was happening. That was a really exciting time. Oh, it was. was yeah, right. It was. Yeah, you're right. Because that's when you're making it and you don't even realize where you are. It's like, you know, you go from one city to the other. So in Puerto Rico, I, I you know, I written a song and I was doing the solo album and I, I asked Ronnie, I said, uh, Hey, I wrote a song. It's, it's very DOE. I said, Would you sing on it? You know, it's a new and word. Said, and he said, sure. And I said, and this is without hearing the song. I mean, it could have sucked, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I sent it to him, and uh, you know, he sent me this email that said, okay, I'm doing the lead vocal, and I'm doing all the harmony, and you're going to like it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then when he sent that back, and we played it in the studio, it was like, wow. 
That song yeah. just came alive, man. It was like, it was such an honor because I didn't know, Ronnie didn't have cancer at that time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I didn't know we were going to lose him, you know. So now it, it just, it's so like uh, emotional when I hear the song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, of course. To have someone like him sing one of your songs, it's probably one of the biggest honors. And Ronnie oh, yeah. would sing yeah. on, uh, Ronnie could sing on a demo we would do, just a rehearsal thing we recorded, then he'll try a vocal. And then he goes, all right, check this out. And it sounds like a finished product when he sings yeah. on it. It's just the voice comes yeah, in, he voice. does some harmonies, and it's just amazing. I played the track by Something. itself, just his voice. And it was, I almost wanted to just put that on the, on the record. Sure. Like, just listen to this by itself. That's how yeah. good he is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can find that stuff on the internet now. There's like yeah, I know, I know. Theo songs, which is drums, which is vocals, and it's crazy. I don't know how they do it, but powerful, you know, it's pretty, voice, pretty amazing. One of the best. I mean, as you know, as uh, as as honored as as that he that he became, and people just really loved him so much. I still think I don't know, maybe you disagree, but I still think he was still uh, underrated while he was singing i mean i, I just don't think he you know the yeah, world I agree really with you. understood i agree with you, wow. I, agree with you. Yeah. Well, I, I guess he never got the recognition that robert that's because he had that crappy drummer behind him <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah oh i told, I told I ronnie you to get the cozy pal keep cozy pal <laughs> yeah right yeah. hey john you know you you've got you've played with so many performers so many rock and rollers and i know you've got great relationships obviously with rob and so many others um, what are some of the, the, the people or any one particular one that you really, really enjoyed more? I, I don't want to say more than others, but really had a great experience, a memorable experience. David Lee Roth or, you know, I know you work with him. Who's the question for? Uh, for John. Okay. Well, I, 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 I really think like when I, when I went into some sessions or some writing sessions, I really think, um, ones that I like was a fan of like Skinner or something like that. Mm -hmm. But um, that was amazing to be a part of that history. And then going outside of the box, you know, even uh, doing something for Rod Stewart or Ricky Martin even, or uh, mm -hmm. things like that, just to coming in on such a um, something like that. It was, it was really well, what did you do uh, a lot Rod? of fun. What, you didn't know what, what was going to happen. What did you do with Rod? On his last, um, his his uh, last record, Time, um, right. I did a song called It's Over with uh, Kevin Savagar. Did you play with it or just write it? Yeah. Uh, you, you there, I it? wrote it. I oh, wrote wow. it and uh, w with Kevin. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. I was oh, like... Yeah. Yeah, think, things like that are that you, are so out of out of the ordinary, you know. Yeah, yeah, right. And that's the thing, you know. People, I mean, you know, you got to realize that John Five is such an amazing songwriter uh, as well. And just look at the the three names. Look at the style differences. I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah I did Rod Stewart, Ricky Martin. I mean, look at the different styles that you're uh, you're you're going with here, and that, that really. Speaks a lot to your talent. You know, the only drag about writing songs today with anybody is nobody sells any freaking records. <laughs> You're right. I mean, you know, like when, when we wrote Do You Think I'm Sexy and Young Turks, I mean, you're talking about, you know, the thing sold millions and millions of albums. You know, I mean, Rod at its best doesn't do that anymore. It's unbelievable. Right. Nobody does. Well, you know I, I, mean? think, I think you, someone you get a number is about one to... record if you sell 50,000 uh, albums, it's number one. Used to be yeah. fifty thousand yeah. albums, like number seventy five. Yeah, right. You got dropped. <laughs> yeah, right. dropped. You're number one hundred and five in the top one hundred. And, <laughs> and then I just I, I worked on a song with um, Post Malone and Tommy Lee, and it was like, wow. you know, it, it, it's so weird how how the the album sales are so different today. And yes. I was, mm -hmm. you know, I'm happy to be. I I was in the I was in the party when before all the downloading and all that stuff, I was still yeah. at the party and uh, I'm glad yeah. I, you know, got to see that with, you know, Manson and David Lee Roth and all that stuff. Yeah. Sure. But you know what, we talk about songs that are coming out that are about to explode, that we talk about 50,000. I think there's a song that's gonna come out that's just gonna reinvent rock and roll. Um, 
why don't we show a little video of the next big hit <laughs> that's going to be a yeah, staple. Okay. Boy, that's Take hard to it. live up to. That is Fernando Perdomo with our own Carmine of Peace That's dropping right. tomorrow. Let's bring music. him. Let's bring him on. He's on the That's show awesome. tonight. Yeah. Fernando. Hey. Fernando. Hey. What's going hey. on, everyone? Come on, Eddie. So you nice speak to Spanish, meet you guys. So good to see yeah. you guys. Good. Hey, so Fernando. Good to you coming. speak Spanish, right? You speak Spanish, There's a right? Eddie. Eddie? So, yeah, I speak Spanish before English. It came in handy because I had a really crazy career. Latin pop. It's funny that you worked with Ricky Martin. That's that, a lot of my friends worked with Ricky too, so that's really cool. Time. You know, I'm very jealous about the Ricky Martin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's Hook me up for tickets for Vegas. Listen, you guys, I got to I, I absolutely. She's coming I out. She's coming out. My wife from the tattoo. Um, can we and see and it? I wait, wait. Can say, we? We all no, want to see, see this. We got to see this. <laughs> we want to see the tattoo. I want to say, serious, I'm such a fan, Eddie, Vinny, everybody, Carmine. It's an honor to talk to you guys, and I've seen you guys so many times live. I mean, I've been to countless shows, and it is an honor to be on the show, and oh, thank, thank you guys you. so much for having we me. Love you really too, man. Awesome John. player. You're a nice guy. All awesome right. John. Killer player. I've been a fan of your thank you since Leah Andreoni. Wow. Oh my god, yeah, that's a long time ago. <laughs> that's wonderful. Thank Dude, you. I'll never forget watching it. I'll never forget seeing you guys live on TV and go and, and I, I was like checking you out back then in the early days of the internet. And I was like, that guy's special. That guy's got something. And there you go. Uh, You've rocketed into the freaking fame and you're amazing, dude. Yeah. yeah. Well, all the best, John. Thank you. I appreciate all the best. We look John. forward. We're going to see you at the Arcada Thank Theater coming soon with uh, okay. with Ingve. Looking forward to the show. Tell Ingve I said hello. Thank you guys. Oh, I okay, will. John. Thank Talk you guys. It's a pleasure. Talk about a Miami connection oh, there with you. Ingve. Yeah, Ingve, right? Right. I'm, so, I, Carmine. Miami, Florida, and Ingve is our local rock star. Yeah. Man. Oh yeah, huge. Um, Carmine, tell us about the hit. Tell us about the song that's going to hit tomorrow. They're right there. Well, the album's going to hit tomorrow. And Fernando, um, actually, we got together because Tom Dowd, the producer, was doing something with Fernando. And then he passed away. And you know, a little time passed by. And I got a call from Tom's daughter and, uh, and, and, and her mother and Tom's wife. And they said, look, this is a guy that Tom was working with, I think, you should maybe work with him because he's really talented and everything. Do you mind if we have him call you? I said, okay. So Vinny's involved in this too because Vinny built my studio computer and the whole studio, right? And I had just gotten it and he showed me how to work it. And I said, after talking to Fernando, I said, whoa, this might be a good way to learn how to operate my computer, you know, and the studio and stuff. And, uh, so we talked, I sent him a piece of music, he sent it back to me, I put drums on it, and I said, whoa, this sounds great, let's do another one, let's do another one, let's do another one. Before you know, we had 18 tracks done, 
and we picked 12 of them and we got a deal on Cleopatra and, and it's an instrumental record, but it's really ballsy. Yeah. Oh, really, it sounded amazing, Fernando. You're a you're a certified musical genius. You just are. He oh, plays God. it all. No, no, he, come he plays, on. That's another bass, that, guitar, that, 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 That's not fair. Don't call me that. <laughs> I'm just. I, yeah, no, he, I, he want to get paid more lifelong, money. Relax. It. <laughs> I'm a lifelong listener of music and lifelong lover of all things rock and roll. And working with Carmine yeah. has been an absolute dream. And we challenge each other. We send stuff to each other. It's almost like it's really one of the most interesting ways to work because um, we we just constantly throw the ball at each other. It's like, okay, now you run. It's a lot of fun. And uh, we're having so much fun making music. And uh, we really enjoy <laughs> being friends too, which is so much fun because, you know, man, I bought the Vanilla Fudge record when I was. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, sure. I've been. Let's just say I've been a fan. Well, of you aren't even born when that record came out. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I wasn't even born, yeah. but it was one of those records yeah. that blew my head off when I was like learning yeah. the guitar. So it, it really is amazing yeah. now to go full circle and to say that I have a band with you, and uh, you've worked yeah. with some of the greatest guitar players on earth, and a lot of my favorite guitar players. So. When you, I've been watching your interviews, and when you're complimenting me, I think it really is uh, full circle for me, and uh, I'm enjoying every second of this. Yeah, oh, that's great. Well, it's great I'm just a Cuban boy from and, Miami. And, and, and again, I couldn't do this, <laughs> you know, when Vinny built my system, that's when I started being able to record in my house, because unlike you, Ron, that has that beautiful studio behind you, <laughs> you know, I have this little room. I was getting all the... I was getting all the phone calls. Fernando sent me this track. I can't open it. It's not coming out. Oh. Fucking... Yeah, yeah. So do you get producer there credits uh, there, Drum Monster? I, I should get producer credit. You yeah, right? should. You were definitely, no, you know, you know what you were? You were a production enabler. <laughs> enabler. <laughs> He's been You're called an enabler. enabler many times. Yeah. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Next time I won't tell you how to open it, I'll tell you. What credit am I getting on this first? <laughs> Next but, time. you know, I, all kidding aside, Fernando, you know, about the musical genius part. I mean, you're, what are you, 37, 38 years old? You've Thank already you. worked wow. with, you know. Wow, Thank you. Uh, you know, is that my bio age? Is that what the bio says? Is it all uh, yeah, right. Like, you're about 50 now, right? <laughs> is it, yeah, does it also say, like, but you know what? Old. I wanted to ask you, though. You got, you know, you're working with, you know, you've done things I don't even know. Neil Young, Clapton, or whatever, all that stuff. You're a part of that world. Um, but you also did something with Creed Bratton. <laughs> oh yeah, and you know, for, well, here's you know Creed uh, from The Office. Creed from The he's Office the, he's the, is an incredible. That's the thing is that he was in the grassroots. The Midnight, Midnight Confessions. Confessions. Damn. Oh no, I didn't know that. Wow. Yep, yeah, Temptation Eyes. About, yeah, I mean, he was in the grassroots. He, Temptation Eyes, one of my favorite songs. Actually, mm -hmm. um, that song taught me. You know what's crazy about Temptation Eyes is that the chord that I use on Rocket to the Sun. <laughs> This thing, I learned that by learning Temptation Eyes. And that's how I learned that chord. So it's funny that, that it all, again, it's all full circle. Um, basically, uh, there's a producer I work with named Dave Way, and he did the Echo in the Canyon soundtrack with Andy Slater. And I got a call, and he's like, hey, you want to come play with Creed Bratton? I'm like, awesome. And I've never seen an episode of The Office but I was oh. immediately like fanboying about, you know, about about freaking grassroots, and we recorded a new version of Temptation Eyes, which is really freaking really? cool. Really, and uh, I'm on three songs on his newest album, which is really cool. It's called uh, Slightly Altered, and it's a great yeah. record. He does. He comes out, does a solo acoustic thing, and uh, it's uh, he's done it by us uh, by, at my theater, and it's uh, it's really something because I don't know people expect to come out and be this person. <laughs> On TV, that, that he plays, uh, he plays himself actually. Yeah. Uh, on The Office, and uh, it's really interesting. And you know, speaking of, of that kind of a thing, Eddie, um, you had a a, a, a a part in in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> what, what? I'd like to go. know. Tell me about that part, but also tell me about the experience of working with the Pee Wee. Did you have interaction with him? Did, yeah. You know, Fred. It was great. That was um, uh, director. Uh, 
That was his debut. Uh, uh, Burton. Tim, Tim, Burton. Tim, Burton. Tim, Burton. Oh, Tim Burton. Tim Burton. That was Tim Burton's debut directorial film. Wow. Oh, wow. That, be, that became, it's like a classic, right? Yeah. And it's like anything else. When you put out a record, you never know if that's going to be the one. And that movie to today, I still get checks from that movie. Wow. For, for okay. the part. I mean, now it's like seven dollars, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but it's like Vinny's checks. Years. Hey, man, that, that's that's yeah. lunch. That could be lunch. If no, but happy. yeah, that, but that's you know what? Somewhat. The thing is, though, Eddie. Crazy. But but what I don't understand is, okay, you know, so you you get this part and everything, but at some point, you had to receive a script and you had to read the script and go, oh yeah, this sounds cool. I mean, how well, how did why did you even take the part? Well, it's great that you did ultimately, but there was no script. It was just it was us filming a video, and Pee Wee Herman was, was being chased, uh, and Godzilla, and I forgot who else <laughs> crashed into us. And, That's what I'm saying. Was, it it was it was it, you know it That's was a right. great experience. It was uh, we did it in Burbank, and it, and when I first went, met Pee Wee, because the first time I met him, like you know, I just. You know, he comes in, and him and Tim Burton, and they go like and he lights a cigarette. People used to smoke cigarettes inside, uh, you know, the campers, the trailers mm -hmm. back then. And, uh, and this is the eighties. They come in, and he goes, and he talks with that deep, like a deep voice. You know, I said, you know, and he says, "Hey, man, I want to thank you guys for doing this, man." And I'm like, oh. right. <laughs> you know, because I was one of the first guys on the set. And good story, the, the people who heard bike. I love riding bicycles, okay? Uh, there, there was 10 Pee Wee Herman bicycles, you know, all done up. I took one for a ride around the lot. And I got in so funny. much trouble. They yelled at me. They said, how dare you go on the line? You have the, the bulls to grab one of these bikes and drive it around. I said, what's the matter? It's just a bicycle. I said, those bikes cost $10,000. I said, you got beat. <laughs> you know, yeah. and then put the thing back, and they, you know, it's one of those stories where, like, they say, "Hey, keep that guy in line. He's always mine." I'm like, I wrote a bike. See, they, that's because California people bought them, and Bronx people didn't buy. You should have said Bronx people to buy the bikes. Yeah, he's, they're yeah. lucky. I didn't steal it. I know. <laughs> so, wow, tell, that's crazy. What, this, <laughs> that's, um, crazy. that's true. So are you guys going to be, uh, tell me a little bit more, uh, Fernando, about uh, this record, the record that you guys are doing with Carmine. Are you going to make it part of a, a little bit of a tour? Or are you going to get, you know, get it out there? It well, drops, well, first it drops of all, tomorrow. Is, anyway, it drops tomorrow. So, it comes out so. tomorrow on Cleopatra. And uh, it's the first of many records because one of the cool things that Carmine said was like, you know, back in the Cactus days, when we finished the first, when we finished the record, we start the next one. So we're already eight songs into the next one and it's wow. going to be really really cool and uh hopefully all instrumental you know, still? shows what happened huh all, all instrumental uh also yeah, yeah you know yeah. all instrumental for now but we had, did have we do have a little bit of an evil plan uh carmine sent one of the songs to a very famous artist from the 70s and she loved it and she's writing lyrics to it so it might be fun if all these songs end up becoming regular songs in the future mm -hmm. okay who's the uh, artist we know. I'll, I, let me guess. Carlos guess? Cavazzo. <laughs> Carlos Cavazzo just called me. Oh, Seriously. I said that doesn't sound like a female from the seventies. Yeah, no. Who's the artist? Oh, that one. No, I know Carlos who it is. Carlos, can that's quite can right. I guess it? Can I guess yeah. it, Carmine? Yeah, We're gonna yeah, keep, yeah. keep on. Is it Susie? We keep on saying it. Susie Quattro. Is it Susie? Susie? Yeah, yeah, I thought it was gonna be yeah. Susie. Yeah. It's either yeah. gonna be Susie or Lita, but I figured it was Susie. AKA Leather Tuscadero. Yep. Yeah. Right. Pinky's what? Cousin, sister? Yeah. It's funny. So real quick here, uh, Fernando, I, th I thought your Echo in the Canyon project was really interesting. Can you give us it a was, little bit of background on that? Oh, well, it's very simple. Um, I was playing Cantor's Deli on Fairfax, where every Tuesday they have an unpaid jam where some of the best musicians in town play for sandwiches. Yeah, and Axel would be there. Be Axel stage. Slash would go there quite a bit. Oh yeah, I mean that's that's where Guns and Roses. That Mark Cantor was their first roadie and their first mm -hmm. photographer. So mm -hmm. they would give him like stale sandwiches and you know whatever extra stuff and be like, here, you, you know, they were those guys were broke. So yep. basically, 
I'm jamming with these guys. They call Mr. Soul by 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 Buffalo Springfield. And I did my oh, yes. patented Neil Young impersonation on guitar. And the right guy mm -hmm. was there, this guy named Andy Slater, who used to be the president of Capitol. He produced Fiona Apple's first album and Macy Gray's album and the Wallflowers and everything. And he comes up to me and he's like, hey, I'm Andy. I'm producing a record. I really want you to get on it. Can you be in the studio tomorrow? I show up. I wow. hear Jacob Dylan's vocals coming out. And the first song that we did was a song called uh, a, so a song called uh, um, uh, You Showed Me by the Turtles. And he's like, here's the chart. I'm like, I don't need it. I know this song. And next song was uh, freaking Never My Love. Don't need the chart. Next song was... Hey, wait, this songs. sounds like John Five. Hold on a minute. Yeah, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah but all these, songs, all these songs yeah. were songs that I knew. And originally he was going to have me play on like one or two songs. I ended up playing on the whole record. Now, the problem is, basically, he's like, look, this is going to be a Jacob Dylan album doing songs of the, of the Laurel Canyon scene, and it's going to all be duets. And it was all like Jacob Dylan placer vocals. Then I started getting text messages like, hey, you remember Never My Love? That's Nora Jones mm. now. Hey, you remember Questions? That's Eric Clapton now. Hey, you remember wow. uh, um, uh, this other one, Fiona Apple back? Fiona, yeah. So I get excited that I'm on this record and we go do a show to promote the record and they film it and all of a sudden he says this would probably make a better movie than an album and I found out the hard way that movies take way longer than albums as you know with you know freaking Pee Wee one of my favorite movies yeah. holy shit um, so <laughs> four years later the movie comes out and the album that I recorded became the soundtrack of the movie there's only one thing. I had to sign an NDA where I couldn't talk about the fact that I was on a track with Clapton. I was yeah. on a track with Neil Young. Two songs with Neil Young. Beck, Fiona Apple. So Stephen I had Stills, Brian Wilson. I had to get this hat to keep my brain from exploding. <laughs> and finally the movie comes out and it, it was a really incredible experience and it was really unique because I got to play with so many people from a record collection and in all the scenes where there's a band, I'm right behind Jacob. For some reason, the stage, the, the stage right part that they put me on was in pretty much all the shots. And I've got my hat, i got my shirt, my jacket, and I get recognized on the street all the time. And it's like, hey, weren't you in, that, in a movie? And I'm like, uh, it depends on what, what type of movie, because I'm in a bunch of different types of movies. <laughs> yeah. Echo, in the, Echo in the Canyon is, is a, a, a life-changing thing. And I have to thank... Um, the, the guys from Canners that I was jamming with, Morty Coyle, Dan Rothschild, uh, Matt Tech, well and Jeff Froman. Yeah. And yeah. it was an incredible experience because <clears throat> it helped me build up my brand to the point where Carmine could give me a call. And I, I'm so mm -hmm. thankful of that because. Um, and Candace has great bologna and eggs. <laughs> I got to try that sometime. And I, pastrami. I, I, awesome. I, here's the problem with me. When I fall in love with an item on, on, a, rec on a restaurant, that's all I eat. So yeah, me too. over there, I get the pastrami Reuben. You know, that's, so why, that's why right? I always eat the bologna and eggs. Oh, there, needs be a, there needs they to be a, a rockumentary about Cantors. They should yeah. call it the Carmine. They should be. Yeah. yeah, they should. They should call it the Carmine. Carmine yep. and eggs. <laughs> yeah. Because Carmine. of the bologna aspect. People want sandwiches. Yeah, bologna. Yeah, bologna. Hey man, I'm finally on a show with Carmen and Pisa. What am I talking about? Bologna? Bologna. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Bologna. They have your taco sauce there. That's the question. Bologna, rise of bologna. They have the taco sauce. Taco sauce. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, Carmen's coming up with his own of bologna, I think. Canners is so Again. cool. I mean, it's a, there, you never know who's going to be there. I remember one time Ron Jeremy was there, and they, for some reason, had to close down for, for cleaning. And I was like, I know why they closed down for cleaning. Ron Jeremy was there. There you go. I'm not going to say the joke I made. Yes, bad. yes, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. Fernando, really, it was it was short lived. We got to have you back on the show. But congratulations on the new album with Carmine, and thanks for joining us tonight. And thank you so much for having me, uh, Ron. And uh, hopefully, we could play the arcade sometime. You know? Oh heck right. yeah. yeah! Just what I uh, need: another Carmine piece incarnation of a band. Well, hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold yeah. on. You know you've made it when you have your name on a Carmine piece bass drum head. 
because yeah. there's been so many bass drum heads. And mm -hmm. I want to see our name on a bass drum head, Carmine. Come on. There you go. Peace Perdomo app. Come on, let's do it. It's really it. a pleasure. And I, I just want to say one more thing. Carmine, you are such a badass because a lot of these songs were based on just drum tracks that he sent me. And the quote that I have is, I hear the music all in the drum track because he plays with dynamics, he plays with feel, and he, he has a great sense as a songwriter. He has a great sense of placing all the different things. So I did. I barely had to edit the drum tracks. Like, for example, our song uh, uh, Flower Child, that's all the way through. Rocket yeah. to the Sun, that's all the way Very through. Good. Well, you got to understand, you know, again, little known fact about uh, a Carmine and, and their big song, you know, one track it was done it was one uh, not one track yeah, but one, one take, uh, mono. One, one, take. take mono. one take one take yeah. uh, keep, keep me hanging on that, that, that's that's the that that's was one the take thing that's the thing yeah so i'm 41 years old and i work with a lot of younger musicians because i produce that's actually my why i moved to la is to become a producer and uh i noticed that these young kids they could barely play through the song they expect <laughs> to like just cut a yeah. verse yeah, and, right? and I, just copy I believe we're playing straight through. You know, yeah. and, and I, I worked in. with a lot of older musicians, and the first thing I noticed, I had Peter Noon at my studio, and he sang <laughs> two complete vocal tracks in, yeah. in one take each. And yeah, it's another like, icon, oh my God. Well, you hear stories about the animals recording House of the Rising Sun, take one. The yeah. zombies recording recording uh, She's Not There, take one. You know? Uh, yeah. And That's I have people be. all the time where... They they get mad at me when I say let's go back to take one. They're like, what are you talking about? That was I was just still figuring out the song. I'm like, yeah, but it had the power, it had the energy. And it's the purest the one. It was pure. Well, it's all the best, Fernando. All the best, you brother. Hey, thanks, guys. Have a wonderful day, and thanks for having me. Thank, thank you, you and Eddie. Thank you so much hey, for being with us. Soon, Wishing thanks, you nothing but the best, man. Hey, thank, thank you, man. You, man. Thanks, Definitely want to thank you. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs> We definitely want to thank John Five for, for being with us. Uh, don't forget, each week on Thursday night, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. on the West Coast, hanging and banging artists on lockdown. And, folks, I know you're loving this show. People are, are so kind talking about it. People are so kind with all the notes. Make sure that you subscribe to our channels because we want to be around for a long time. This was episode 65. We're over a year into this thing, and we're going to do a whole lot more. Got to thank. Let me see. Right now, I'd like to thank Bill Green. These are all our producers. Steve Love, Bill Dussinger. Uh, Dussinger, I'm sorry. Ben, love you, brother. Gwen, Peter, Stephanie over here, and uh, everybody who's involved in putting this show on for you each week. So until next week, make sure that you are hanging and banging with us every Thursday night. Thanks for being with us. Artists on Lockdown, hanging and banging. See you next week.